Hello and welcome to this very basic introduction to breadboards or prototype boards. And in future videos, we're going to be making a few circuits using breadboards. But in this video, I really just wanted to introduce what a breadboard is and some of the rules involved in making circuits using breadboards. So breadboards or prototype boards are boards that look like this and whose purpose is to allow us to create circuits in a non-permanent way. You can see that the breadboard has this plastic fascia made up of lots of rows of sockets. And with these sockets, we can insert components or wire links in a way that we can build up uh, very simple circuits in a way that they can be disassembled again. So we're not using the components permanently. We're just using them for the purpose of creating a prototype. What I wanted to do in this video is just explain a little bit more about breadboards and some of the pitfalls involved in creating a circuit using breadboards if you're not familiar with them already. And we'll go ahead and make a very, very simple circuit as well. So to help explain, what I'm going to do is on this bit of paper here, I'm going to draw a diagram of the breadboard or, or roughly what that breadboard looks like. If you have a look at this breadboard here, we can see that there's a couple of rows that run along the top there and there's a couple of rows that run along the bottom. So what I'll do is I'll try and just sort of sketch um, just a rough outline of that. There's my couple of rows that run along the top there and here's the rows that run along the bottom. And in the middle you can see we have a sort of patch of sockets here and here running either side of this groove that runs down the middle. So again, I'm gonna try and sketch that in my diagram here. I've got a sort of uh, area of sockets there, an area of sockets here. And then I have this sort of, this gap, this groove that runs down the middle. So the reason I've drawn this out is because behind this plastic fascia, there's actually um, conducting metal connections that run underneath um, the plastic fascia that connect the sockets together. But depending on which rows or sections uh, that we're talking about here, depends on the direction that those connections take. So for example, these top rows and these bottom rows here, uh, or rails, are connected together by an electrical connection that goes along each row. So again, what I'll do is just with a, a pen here, I'll sketch that we have some kind of um, electrical, electrical connection that runs along each row. Likewise, at the bottom, we've got these two rails at the bottom here. And again, these have a metallic connection or rail that runs along and connects all of those sockets together. So, for example, if I was to plug something into um, that top row there, it would therefore be connected to anything else connected on that same row. There's a metallic conductor that runs along that row. Likewise, at the bottom, if I was to plug something into this row, say, then necessarily it would be connected to anything else along that row as well. In the middle, on the other hand, these two sections that run in the middle is slightly different in that these connections run vertically. And so we have each row, uh, or each column rather, down these sort of middle sections of the breadboard are connected vertically. Likewise, in that bottom section, um, it's the same thing. We've got these vertical connections. However, those connections don't span this gap or groove that runs down the middle here. So what I mean by that is if I was to connect something um, in a given row there, uh, that's the third, the third column on my breadboard, then it would be connected to anything else in that third column on the same side of the groove but it wouldn't be connected to anything in that third column below the groove. 
So what we can do is by knowing these two um, rules that these um, connections run horizontally on the rails and they run vertically in these central sections, we can now start to create um, some simple circuits. One thing I'll point out, and it depends on the, the exact sort of model or type of breadboard you've got, but in this particular example, the rails actually have a gap as well at the halfway point. You can see um, denoted by the lines that stop there. Um, so actually, these top connections um, are not connected to the same uh, row on the other side of that gap in the middle. If we wanted to have a rail that runs all the way along the top, then very simply, all we would need to do is connect a wire link that joins or bridges those two together. And now we've got one rail that runs all along the top there. But that's just something to watch out for um, if you've got a breadboard similar to this. OK, so what I want to do now is I want to create a very simple circuit. And the circuit is going to look something like this. I would like to have... Um, a 9 volt battery. So there's my uh, 9 volt um, voltage there. And I would like that to be connected to a resistor. And it's going to be a 470 ohm resistor. And I would like that resistor to be connected to an LED. There's my LED. And then back to the battery again. That's the circuit that I want to create. So what I would want to do is start to assemble um, some of those components on my breadboard. I'm going to leave the battery for now, but I'm going to start by focusing on these two components, the resistor and the LED. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect my battery at the end. I'm going to connect it to the top rail, positive, and the bottom rail, negative. And so really, I've got anywhere along here, uh, these are these two rows here, top and bottom, are going to be connected to the positive and the negative, respectively. So I, I can really use anything on this rail as a starting point. And so from the top, positive, the first component we come to is a resistor. So um, here I've got um, some 470 ohm resistors. Uh, if you get your resistors like this, um, that are sort of packaged on tape what you'll often find is when you remove a resistor it still has the sort of residue of some of the glue on the end of the um the resistor's leg there and you might not be able to see that in the video but sometimes if there's a lot of that glue it can interfere with the connection um and it's a good idea to just sort of um use your nail um just to scrape off any excess glue on both ends there, just to make sure that um, there's no there's no glue uh, that's going to impede the connection at all. Another good thing, just before doing anything else, is you can see maybe that there's a slight um, bend in the wire there, a slight sort of um, kink in the in the, the 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 metal leg there. And what I want to do is try and straighten that as much as possible. If if one of the connections is already bent, when you try and put it in, it might not go in properly. So it's a good idea to make sure that you've got um, straight legs to your components wherever possible. So anyway, on this top row here, anywhere along that top row, I'm going to connect my resistor, or one end of it at least. Where does the other end go? Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to place that anywhere, really, it doesn't matter for now, in the central section there. And what I'm conscious of, remembering this groove here, one of the common sort of pitfalls when I see people create breadboards, uh, breadboard circuits for the first time, is that they'll do something like this. Here's my next component, my LED. They will then use the same row, they'll connect their LED, something, oops, something like this, um, well, what's the problem there? The problem being, remember that our electrical connection doesn't span that gap there. So this resistor is not connected to this LED, even though they're in the same row, they're on the other side of the groove there. So that connection from resistor to LED 
is broken. So I want to make sure that the LED is on the same side as the resistor, on the same side of the groove, but it's also in the same row. So we'll have something that looks like that. Just a word of warning about LEDs. Um, you might be familiar with LEDs from creating circuit simulations or drawing diagrams, but maybe this is your first time actually um, using a physical LED and creating a circuit with one. LEDs are examples of semiconducting components. So a resistor is not a semiconducting component. It's a passive component in which I mean that it doesn't matter which way around it is. We can turn that resistor around. It doesn't make any difference. For an LED and other components like diodes and transistors and things like that, it does matter which way around the LED goes. The easiest way to know which way around an LED goes is you'll notice that one leg is slightly longer, if I straighten those out, ever so slightly longer than the other. The longer leg is positive. The shorter leg is negative. What if the LED's legs have been cut or they've been trimmed and they're both the same length? Well, we still have another clue. One of the edges of the LED is flat. And you might not be able to see that in the video, but it's got a very slight flattened edge on one of the sides there. And that side corresponds with the short leg or the negative leg. And so what I'm going to do is I know either way, because of the flat edge or the short leg, that side is negative. It's gonna to go to the negative connection of my battery. And so remembering I'm connecting the positive end of the LED on the same side of the groove and the negative end is gonna go all the way down here, if I can stretch it out, it's gonna go all the way down to our negative rail. And so now we've almost completed our circuit. All we need now is the battery, but we've got that resistor connected to the LED, which goes to negative. All we need to do now is connect the battery. And I'm gonna use one of these um, battery snaps to do that. Uh, this is for a, a PP3 nine volt battery. Um, all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna connect the positive end, the red, to the positive rail of my breadboard there. Again, doesn't matter really where, anywhere on this um, row would do because they're all joined by that connection that runs underneath. Likewise, negative, the black, to that negative rail there. And so hopefully, fingers crossed, if we uh, get a battery, which I've got one here, and we connect that, making sure that we have it the right way around, we should get our LED lighting up. Uh, you'll notice it disappeared just for a moment there. One of the, the tricky things with breadboards is sometimes the connections aren't as secure. So that red wire there wasn't um, in as far as it would go. And so it's just something to watch out for to make sure that your connections are um, securely in place. Another thing to watch out for is the opposite. Sometimes you'll notice, well, in fact, let's have a look at the depth of the breadboard. The breadboard itself is only about, um, I don't know, three quarters of a centimeter in depth. And not all of that is accessible for the connection to be inserted. And so really what we want is to feel a sort of secure connection um, but we don't want to start feeding more and more of this connection in. What happens is if we start pushing more wire in that needs to be, it starts to curl around inside and it can start connecting to other rows and um, other uh, columns of connections under that fascia. The, the, the excess starts to sort of feed in underneath the fascia, which we don't want. So you only need to put, in fact, you can see hopefully there, um, we want enough to know that it's securely in place, um, but not too much that um, we're gonna cause problems there. So this was an example of a very, very simple circuit. In future videos, we're going to be making um, a transistor amplifier. 
we're going to be making an active filter circuit and we're going to be making a binary counter as well. But we're going to be using these same approaches throughout.